What's up guys, Manny from Motor Million and everything you see over here, excluding the swing arm, is going off and not going back on. Pardon my mess here guys, because I've been shopping at Motor Million, picking up all these parts for our Tuono V4 and I want to take this time to mention to you guys that all the parts that we use on this video are in the link in the description below and let's get to it. So, I was test fitting stuff and that's what the truth is, that there's a mess here because it is an unusual setup, right? We don't deal with tonos a lot, so this is why we have a tono here, so that we get ourselves familiar with it. Also, the core motor wheels that we're using are brand new to us, so we wanna check stuff out. On top of it, we like to customize stuff, so we're mixing and matching stuff, which is not a bad thing, it's a great thing. So we have our rear sprocket here, that's made it to our sprocket carrier, our pro tie bolts, front sprocket, chain, rear lightweight rotor, our TWM rear chain adjuster. So this will set the tension for the chain as well. They look great and also you'll see when you install and remove the wheel, you don't have to mess with the chain tension anymore. We have one part that we've been waiting for to film this episode for you guys. I haven't even opened it and you guys have seen this on the Grape 8 build and also on 650 Eves RSV4 where we did the underslung rear caliper setup. I can tell you guys as of this video, this is available for sale because we got so many people reaching out to us saying one of these is going to be available, one of on your site. So now, if you check the link in the description below, as I mentioned, they are there and this is the final product. It just arrived from England to us and yes, they're made in England by my good buddy Matthew, Matthew from Imesco. Let me open this. This is the unboxing of uh, this thing. It's unwrapping, let's say. And look at this, this looks beautiful. Now it has a part number on it. And this works on the RSV4 and on the Tuono V4 as well. This is the underslung rear caliper setup. It works with stock wheels. It works with aftermarket wheels. It works with the bikes that have the ABS. There were kits out there that was available only for aftermarket wheels and only for non-ABS bikes. This takes care of all the different setups. So less talking, more working. Let me quickly go ahead and start getting everything that I mentioned off the bike because none of those are going back on because all you see over here plus one more part that you guys will see throughout the video is going to go back on that axle. Are you guys still watching? I told you guys everything is coming off and every time I work in an Aprilia it seems like I gotta move the tank or prop the tank, but obviously this is not what's required for just a rear wheel swap. We're doing a lot more than just a rear wheel, including our underslung rear caliper setup, and the ABS pump is right under the tank. That's why we have the tank propped up so that I could chase this cable here because the kit comes with a brand new rear brake line that needs to be slightly longer to accommodate for that underslung caliper setup. We could still use our factory rear caliper or if you want to upgrade to a P234 rear caliper from Brembo, it also works with that. But uh, let me try to do this and then once I have the brake line and the caliper bracket on, I'm going to check back with you. Our rear caliper is out, I ran the new line, and I'm gonna set this down over here. And once that's set, we could pull this out. This is our old caliper mount, which is a top mount, and Aprilia used to run an underslung on all their bikes. We don't know why I changed it to the top mount when they released the 21 models, and this is our underslung caliper setup. I'm gonna just slide this into here just to make everything easier for me to mock up. Now, before I even take this brake line off, I'm gonna make sure that everything works. And for now, I'm gonna change my caliper bolts, but before I change those bolts, let's just hand tie this on. I wanna somehow put the line somewhere like this. It's not gonna stay there. Perfect. So now is the time that we're gonna make a mess. We're gonna remove this line and get our underslung line 
together and luckily I had figured out on the previous bikes that we could run it through here just like that and do this like this and then you see this lines up perfectly over here we have enough clearance for our bleeder so that we could bleed the brakes we're on a different part of the studio because i want to put the scale where we're doing these heavy things onto the concrete because our flooring is plastic and it gives around a little bit when things are heavy. And when I say heavy, this wheel is heavy. This is a stock wheel, guys. And for the sake of apples to apples, we got the wheel and the tires because I forgot to weigh these without tires. So we're getting a tire and wheel measurement. The stock wheel is at 31 pounds even. That's a nice even number. Drum roll, please. This wheel, it feels much lighter, guys. So I'm gonna say 28, let's see. 25.28 pounds. I'm out of breath, guys. 30 pounds, 25 point something pounds. That's four and a change of pounds of savings in the rear wheel, that's quite a bit. If you guys watch the first episode of this wheel transformation, let's call it, the front wheel saved 1.1 pounds. I was very happy because the Prilly actually has very lightweight wheels from the factory, from on their factory models, I believe. I don't know if there's a difference between the factory wheels and non-factory specification wheels. So the OEM wheels, if you know, put in the comments below. But 1.1 pound in the front was very, very good. And I said the rear wheel is gonna be a bigger difference. It's almost 4.7 two pounds, I think, if I did the math correctly. That's huge weight savings, but it doesn't end there. We're gonna be running our ultralight rear rotor. We get a lot of you guys asking if these rotors are safe. And let me just tell you this, some of the super bikes in Motor America series use these same exact rotors. And most of your braking is done through the front, so yes, they're exactly safe. I think maybe due to the design of it, it may actually slice through the brake pads a little quicker, so you might have a little faster wear of your rear brake pads, but we've been running these rotors for years now. I don't think we've even went through a set of rear pads at all on the bikes, but uh, let's go wait. I have our stock rear rotor here. I mean, I don't know if there's gonna be a difference, but let's try it, because you guys like to see the weight differences. And again, the stock rotor is 1.72 pounds. And the ultralight rear rotor is 1.08 pounds. So we're officially over five pounds of weight savings with everything we're doing. And it doesn't end there because we'll get to the sprockets when we get to sprockets. Now I'm gonna install the sprockets on the sprocket carrier of our motorcycle. And also we're gonna install this with the ABS sensor because our caliper setup now still allows us to have ABS. Proti titanium bolts that also saves weight. But uh, I'm not gonna go crazy with the scale out and put gram scales and everything, but let's get these on the bike because I really wanna see that black and white setup on the bike and I'm waiting to hear your comments. Once you see it installed, let me know if it looks cool because I already got some comments with the guys here at Motor Million. I'll tell you what they commented once I have everything on and I see it for myself. Remember when I said we still got one part that we're gonna say wait with, but We'll get to it when we get to it. It's not the sprockets. We might not get to it today, but it is our carbon fiber rear fender or hugger as people call it from full six. Trust me, I weigh this kind of ridiculous the way rear huggers. We do carbon because it's carbon, but it's always lighter than plastic if you buy from a credible source like full six and other credible brands that might be out there. 0.9 pounds for the stock hugger, 0.5 pounds for this. If you're looking to say wait with a rear hugger, there you go. We want to make it look good. We're open and honest about it. But if you're thinking that we're putting weight on with carbon, we already did that with our frame covers and swing arm covers, guys. Rear wheel is on, my shirt turned black. The rear wheel is a color matched metallic black that matches the Ultra Gold's black color scheme. The black is being in the backside. I have yet to look at the bike, just like the front wheel. I'm gonna run over there 
take a look at it so you guys get my honest opinion of what I think of the looks because this was a much debated topic over here what color scheme we're running on the wheels and I think it looks good it looks as intended we do often photoshop stuff before we actually paint them because it is a process it's not easy to change so what were the options the options were white and white white and gold or white and black why did we choose white and black white and black because look at the spike there's white here there's gold line here there's black here white and white would have looked cool so it would have white and gold but it would have overpowered the look of this motorcycle i think the beauty of the ultra gold and the tono is all in the front this white color is so pretty and this front end looks so good that you want to I don't know. I just don't think it would look good and I don't know if you agree with it. Put your comments in the below. I really want to know what you guys think. The bike is in fact missing the chain and that's for the next episode. We did run into a roadblock and that's why my shirt is black right now because we did a little more, let's say, dirty work than what we wanted to do. So these caliper brackets are designed for stock wheels, OZ racing wheels, BSD wheels and Marcusini wheels and they're not exactly designed for the core motor wheel. You're probably wondering how does that change it, right? So because the overall width of the wheels are the same, so it doesn't matter which wheel you run. It's not about the width, it's about the spacers that you're running on these wheels and what spacers they come with. Stock wheels generally had the biggest diameter spacers. We're not talking about width, we're talking about diameter. OZ Racing, BSD, and Marcassini have smaller diameter spacers. Now you're probably wondering, what does the diameter have to do with anything about fitment? When we designed this rear caliper setup on the bike with that bracket, there we put a ridge in there so that you could just put your wheel there, the spacer hangs on that ridge and there is a certain diameter to that ridge that it has to be. The core motor wheels, the spacers are giant in terms of diameter. I've never seen them and we haven't had experience with core motor wheels before. This doesn't make him any better or any worse. It's just the fact that that caliper setup and the bracket is not designed for these wheels. We have the ability to machine down the ridge radius and to make it to what we want. And that's why this wheel is on there right now with that rear caliper setup. But just a word of caution, if you wanna run that rear bracket on your bike, it will not work with core motor wheels. So you'd have to either use core motor wheels and not have your underslung set up on your bike or use your underslung set up on your stock wheels, OZ racing wheels, BSC wheels, or Marcassini wheels. I think that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. I'm very happy with where we got in. I wish the chain and everything else was on the bike, but we'll leave that for another episode. I think this was a joy of an episode to see this bike with its custom wheel setups. And then on the next episode, we'll talk about the weight savings that the chain and sprocket will bring. And also, we'll do a little bit of a tech talk I'll talk to you guys about the chain setup, the wheelbase, and how it affects the handling and the rideability of the motorcycles. Until then, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, guys, have a good one.